All right, now that we've gotten all the basics out of the way, we know all this by now, barely. So it's time now to actually start coding for the website. All right. So the thing we're going to start with first is the sign up page because we want to be able to sign up and so that we can log in later on and then open up our profile. Now, in order for us to sign up, what sign up actually does is that it creates um, it creates a record in the database. So there's a database for the website. And then when you sign up, all you are doing is putting your information in a database so that the next time you want to log into a website, the website will check in the database to see if you exist. They need to know that you already signed up and they need to get that information. It will know your name, age, gender, and all that information that you provided the first time. So what we need now is a database. So we need to create a database. So to do that, make sure that your server is running. I'm running Zamp. So make sure that MySQL and Apache are both running because MySQL is the database we are going to be using. Apache is the one that's running the PHP. So make sure both of these have started and they are green and then we are ready to go. So open your browser after switching those on and go to open a new tab and type in localhost slash php my admin. So this should open up the php my admin page and this is where our database our databases reside. So here as you can see there's a list of databases that come with uh, php. So never mind these what we want to do is create on the click on the new button to create a new database. So let me click here. And there we go, database, create new. So obvious, we're going to name it my book. That's the database name. So you can put an underscore and say DB, something like that, just to know that it's a database. So you can name it anything you want, as long as there are no spaces there. So let's hit create. And instantly we have my book DB right there. So that's how easy it is to create a database. Now inside a database, we need to have tables. Okay, so a database is simply a collection of tables. Now tables are simply like spreadsheets. So we want to have one spreadsheet that will contain the names of the users. We'll have another spreadsheet that contains the posts of users and another spreadsheet that contains uh, maybe profile pictures or photos of people. So this is entirely up to you how you structure your database. But in this case, we're going to create one table called users because this is where we're going to be saving the names of the users. Now, how many columns? Just like a normal spreadsheet, a database requires columns. Now in this one, we're going to have nine columns. Why nine? Because uh, anyway, you're going to see why we have nine as, as, as I create them. So I'm just going to say go. And then it brings us the, okay, taking a bit of time. All right, so there we are. So it brings us here where we can add the names of our columns, the type of column we want, and the length of data that is going to be saved in there. So this might look a little bit intimidating, but it's actually not. So the first thing we need is ID. Now, ID is required because every uh, row, because these are going to be rows like just like you see here. Now, each row needs an ID for us to be able to retrieve the data in there. So the first column will be called ID. The second column is we're going to have one called user ID. So the ID, the first ID is for the ID of the records. The second I is for the user. So each user in our, uh, our social website will have an ID assigned to them. It will just be a random number that we assign. And then from there, we'll need uh, to add a first name, of course, and then we need to add a last name. Now, here I'm following what's here because we have first name, last name, mail, uh, email, password. So this is one thing. 
So let's go back here and see what uh, what we are doing. Oh, oh. All right. So agenda, of course. And then we'll have the email. And then we'll have the password. Okay, so let me scroll down here. Password and what else do we need? Uh, we also need what is called a URL address. Uh, you will know what this one is for. Uh, on a profile, when a user gets to a profile, we want a clean uh, URL, a clean link to their profile, which contains an actual name instead of a user ID. Okay, that usually looks much better when, especially when your users are sharing their profile link. And then finally, we'll add date. Okay, now we need to choose the data types because this second line is for choosing types. So the first one here, the date, is the easiest one to choose. We'll go and choose, we go down here and choose timestamp. So this will be filled in automatically by the database. Every time you create a record, the date will be added automatically. Now the rest of these, I want to add what is called a variable character or var car. All right, so it's a little bit slow because of my capture video capture software. Taking a bit of time. Okay. So all these will have a variable character type up to this one as well, this one as well. Because variable character, actually what it means, it just means text, words. So since a name, uh, the first name is a word, the last name is a word, the gender is a word, the email, and so on and so on. So that's why we are using this one called variable character or varcar. And then we get to user ID. Now, user ID, I want a 19 digit user ID. So I'll use this one called big int. This one is int short for integer, but I want a big integer. That's 19 uh, numbers long. So I'll put big int. Now here it wants me to indicate the length of these items. So I'll do that. I'll just say 19, 19. And then first name, I think the maximum a first name can be is probably 50. So I'll add 50 there. Gender, the maximum it can have is the word female. So that's about six characters. And then email, some emails can be long. So I'll put a hundred. And the password, uh, password as well, I'll put a hundred. Okay becoming a bit slow there. One hundred and URL address as well one hundred. This one I can leave the date time it will be automatic. Now one more important thing we have to add is on the ID we have to go here where it says index and select primary key. So what primary key does it tells the database just say OK here. It tells the database that this ID column is the primary key, meaning it has to, let's say for example, you had one record, ID will be equal to one. Now, if I put another record, I don't have to go and check in the database how many records I already have. My database will automatically add an ID to the next uh, record if I make it the primary index, OK? So we're going to add some more indices here. Now an index just helps in searching. So in this case, this primary index will be helping the database to find our records. So that's why it will be adding the numbers automatically. You'll see that in action as we go. So let me hit save down here and hit save. Uh, is this the one? Oh yeah, that's the save right there. So let me hit save. Okay, processing requests, which is good. And now it's done. So these are the columns that have been created. Now I want to add uh, indices on all these. I want to have an index. So any column that you're going to be using to search. So let's say for example, I'm, uh, users might want to search for uh, somebody who's on the website. They might use the first name or last name or gender or 
uh, the user ID will be used by the website to find a specific user. And then the only thing we won't need to search for is password. The URL address might be needed by the website and the email when signing up or when logging in, it will, the website needs to search for a particular email. So all these will require an index. So you do that by adding index here, just go here and say index and say okay. So you see this grayed out key, that means you've added an index here. So let me add an index to all these guys here. Now you can add an index at once to the whole group, but I don't want to do that because it will create what is called a compound index, something that is uh, one index for all the, the columns and that's not what I want. I want an index for an individual column. So let me go here. That's why I'm adding these uh, one by one which if you have a lot of columns can be tiring. I don't know if there's a shortcut to doing this. So let me go to the URL address, add an index, and also the date. I'm going to add an index because I might want to search by date to see who signed up when. Right, so all this except password has an index. And this is all we need for our database. So if we go to browse here, it's going to show us the records that are inside the database. So we can leave this open for a short time as we add records to this. So we're going to have an example and see how we add records to this. Now, one more important thing is that for you to access a database, you need to have a username and a password. Now, since we haven't added a username and password, the default username is root and the password, and there's no password, it's empty. So let's go back here. Now that we've created our database, we'll go in the next video to see how we can access information and write information to this exact database. I'll see you in the next video.